I couldn't do the highlights before because this paint, painting was all wet. I need to have very sharp, crisp highlights along the edge of the water in order to give the impression of wet water. And those highlights are just basically white paint. So I'm going to take a brush here with a little bit of juice. Now, uh, it turns out that uh, the thinner your paint, the sharper the edge you're able to create. So here comes this little highlight in here. Can you see this? And then over here by this log, I want this log to look like it's in the water. Too much will ruin it. So we want to be somewhat subtle in this approach. Only those objects, only those areas which are lighter than the reflecting surface will appear in a reflection. Here, th this is darker than the reflecting surface. Now, water has no color. Uh, of its own, so it has to use the color of what's underneath it, the, the bottom of the water. When we don't see a reflection, we see the transparency of the water. So down in this section, we're going to be able to see the actual bottom of the water. So what I want to do is I want to indicate that by showing you a few of the rocks that are occurring underneath this water. I'm doing a very subtle shadow of a rock that is seen underneath the surface. And we'll only be able to see these in the, what uh, appears to be the dark part of the reflection. So it's subtle stuff, but it, uh, it can make a big difference in the final picture. For me, it's the subtleties. I always look for the subtleties. I like them the best. Now, this is our painting. And the lessons I wanted you to learn in this painting were that uh, the texture is created at the transition between the light and the shadow, so that this is the shadow, this over here is the light, in between there we see a texture. I wanted you to see about how reflections work. Here, the, this dark area is actually not reflected because it's darker than the reflecting surface, so what we see instead is the reflecting surface. Here, in the light area, where the, uh, this, the thing doing the reflecting is lighter than the reflecting surface, we are going to see a duplication of that color. Here in the foreground, we see the transparency of the water. When a when, uh, reflection is missing, we can see into the water. And most importantly, well, not most importantly, importantly, is the way we've worked the colors from the background to the foreground. We've used colors back in here, which are more neutral than those colors we've used in the foreground. And we've managed, uh, or at least I've tried, to, to increase the amount of the complementary color as I've gotten further away. This results in having purer colors in the foreground and more muted colors in the background. Actually, I think the most important thing, the most important lesson here is the elliptical perspective. That is what makes the, the shorelines look natural. This is going to be one of the most difficult things for you, for you to understand, and I hope that you'll spend some time looking out in the world for it. But you'll know things, as things are further away on a plane, they appear flatter, so that this distant one here is actually quite flat, almost parallel to the horizon. This next one gets a little more curved, this one has more curved, this has more, this has more, this has the most. That uh, relationship is very important in creating planes, flat planes, the plane of the water, for example. Additionally, the elliptical perspective is used in creating the inclines of these hills, so that the bases of all these bushes are inclining on, an on what we call an elliptical perspective uh, plane. This line down here goes uh, is created by the angle here. The ellipse in, in these parts show us the, the change. This, this land is actually rotating around like this, so that this part over here, as you can see, is actually flatter than this part down here. There is a slight curve to the uh, shoreline at this point. That curve is, is shown to us exclusively by the ellipse of the light areas. The ellipses are part of the lesson. So now, this painting could continue. We could make more and more layers of this. Uh, for now, I'm happy with the lesson. I think that I, the points have been made. If, if you feel like the, we've gone too quickly or something, watch the tape again and then try to get it. The ellipses are the hardest part and, and the most valuable part. I use them constantly. But I know that 
uh, from past experience teaching my students that it's an, it's an idea that it, they have a hard time grasping at first. Once they get it, they love it. But once, uh, but in the beginning, it's a little confusing. So don't be confused. Don't worry about a thing. It will come, and uh, practice is all it takes. The more practice, the better. And remember, you don't age while you're painting. You're looking at one of the reasons that I live here. It's a totally a beautiful place, and I love it uh, completely. But uh, the art that you find has got to come from you. It doesn't come from where you live. It's important that you find the art within yourself. It's not the place that creates the art. It's you that creates the art. So I want you to go around and look and find the art in your own environment. It's there. I guarantee it. And it's going to be there in some funny places. It's up to you to find them. You're the artist. You have the unique vision. And your vision is what we want to see. So keep looking out there for your own beauty, wherever it may be. All right, many people feel that you have to have a natural ability to paint. Forget that. I've, in all my career of teaching, and I've been teaching for a long time now, I've met all of two what I consider naturals. And the thing with naturals is that they start out good, but they never get any better. The thing with people like you and me is we start out terrible, but we get better all the time. So the more you do, the better you're going to get. I encourage you to do a lot more.